What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 biggest WWE cringe moments. Well, the thing about wrestling, and I'm not gonna just delegate it to the PG era. I'm not even just gonna delegate it to one company. Wrestling is for actually anytime I've ever can remember has had some cringe moments, some moments that even if you look back on them now, you'd be like, yeah, that was that was cringe, even for that time period. Cringe characters, cringe moments, cringe promos. It happens. Not everything is going to be super cool and super dope and super memorable. A lot of times you just can be like, someone produced that. Someone said, we're going to say that on camera. Someone said, we're going to create this character and it's going to be hilarious. A lot of times it's a Vince McMahon inside joke that's not funny. You know, or there's, you know, cringe promo and delivery. You know, it, it happens in every single company. It's it's not it's not something that's just recent. It happens. You know, so we're going to check out some of these moments that was just ridiculously cringe. Shout out to uh, Cultaholic Wrestling. Uh, link to the original video will be down below in the description. Go give them a subscription. Let's check this out. Being a WWE fan is accepting the danger that other people will mock you for your chosen hobby. To be honest, sometimes we can't blame them. This yeah. is a company that has produced Katie Vick, an old woman giving birth to a hand, and a yeah. match between John Cena and Kevin Federline, where thing. Britney Spears' ex-husband actually won. Sometimes, though, a moment is so embarrassing that you can feel people making fun of you who aren't even there. These 10 instances all serve as a stark reminder that, for the longest time, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I forgot about that. <laughs> Mr. McMahon versus Donald Trump versus Rosie O'Donnell. That's That was the thing. Is all serve as a stark reminder that, for the longest time, WWE was overseen by an out-of-touch billionaire who wouldn't know good taste if it slapped him in the face. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 biggest WWE cringe moments. Join us. Number 10, Vince and Steph draw numbers. There was a time where Vince McMahon was easily one of the best on-mic performers in the entire business. Mm -hmm. But by the time WWE's PG era had rolled around, Vince wasn't the verbose, eloquent talker that he once was. An obvious pick for Vince's cringiest moment would be the ill-fated Million Dollar Mania from 2008. But in the spirit of variety, let's take a look at this overlooked car wreck from 2016 instead. During his feud with Roman Reigns, McMahon made the big dog defend his WWE title in the 2016 Royal Rumble match. To stack the odds even further, McMahon rigged it so that Reigns would enter the match at number one. Vince and daughter Stephanie made a big song and dance of drawing names from a tumbler to decide who would enter the match first. They pulled out one ball with Reigns' name on it. Then they did it again to prove it wasn't bad luck. Then they did it again and again and again. <laughs> this painfully unfunny segment yeah. dragged on for what felt like hours, all to achieve something we all knew was coming anyway. Let's just say the genetic jackhammer's Life Sucks promo felt a very long way away. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's crazy because that is a very good criticism. Vince McMahon, once he came from behind commentary and really started being this evil, uh, evil corporate figure, you know, the figurehead for WWE, he was actually pretty good on the, on the, on the microphone. Like for someone that was just doing commentary to really being this evil heel, he was actually pretty good at it. And then in later years, he, you know, he just he didn't have the same wittiness in the same that same charisma on the microphone so i'm brodus clay's wrestlemania dance ah. before he became the greatest nwa world's heavyweight champion of all time tyrus was performing in wwe as the funkasaurus yep. brodus clay the big man would come down to the ring to earnest the cat miller's old music somebody call my mama strutting his stuff alongside the funkadactyls cameron and naomi that sentence just made me feel slightly ill. WWE took Clay's theme to its logical extreme at WrestleMania 28, when the dancing dino instructed everyone to get their phones out and actually call their mothers. No thank you, I would like her to remain proud of me. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Clay called his mother and discovered that she was actually at the stadium. This led to a woman in very obvious prosthetics and grey wig coming out on stage and dancing to the song. She wiggled, she jiggled, she waved her enormous fake bottom around for all to see. 
Somewhere in heaven, Andre the Giant was watching this and thinking, this is what me and Hogan at WrestleMania 3 led to. I wasn't a big fan of the this whole gimmick, his gimmick. I just, it was funny here and there, but it just, I... I'm not, see, I'm not here to see you dance. I'm here to see you beat people up, bro. It was embarrassing, it was unnecessary, and it wasted valuable minutes at the biggest show of the year. Funk might have been on a roll, but this segment definitely wasn't. Number eight, Natalia's Flatulence. Ah, Natalia is this WWE's was a thing too. longest Unforged. serving female performer ever, which is remarkable when you consider some of the utter rubbish they've put her through over the years. The daughter of WWE Hall of Famer Jim the Anvil Neidhart once got saddled with a gimmick so embarrassing I'm surprised she ever showed her face in public again, yet alone kept turning up for work. In 2012, the Queen of Hearts was given the character of Person Who Farts A Lot. Now you could argue that that isn't a character, and guess what, you'd be right. She would be backstage talking with someone or competing in a match and then she would break wind and everyone around her would have to act like someone had just opened one of those cans of pickled herring. You know, the ones that are really famous for smelling bad. You know the ones we mean. Delicious. We're not focusing on one specific moment from this arc, as the entire Sad. thing was one great big cringe from start to finish. If anyone were to ever doubt just how much Natalia loves this business, then show them this and tell them that she stayed employed for another decade plus. Number seven. Which is crazy, even though she just got squashed on her birthday at Night of Champions. Kudos to Natalia, bro. They they legitimately have given her awful characters and character developments and storylines, and she goes out there and just does what she's told to. Kudos to her. Because that's... I remember that for a brief period. I was just like, yeah, that's, that's dumb. It's not funny. Fort jokes, like, you know, passing gas jokes. That, that shit... It's like grade school comedy, bro. Like, what? No. Awful. And Cena embarrasses Cole. After subtly turning to the dark side on NXT, Michael Cole went full blown heel yeah. on the main roster in late 2010, and it was bloody insufferable. It was, Having a it was heel annoying. color commentator is one thing, but a heel lead announcer seemingly out to sabotage the show? The voice that's supposed to welcome you to the show, guide you through all the ma- Michael Cole, during that time period, he was making it very hard to watch Monday Night Raw. He was just. Just it wasn't even like good heel heat. It was like get off the commentary table, please. He's much better now, much more tolerable now. But back then, Jesus, it was awful. He oh my god. Matches and serve as an all-round reassuring presence. That is a bad idea, 10 times out of 10. Whether he was fanboying for The Miz, chastising Jerry Lawler, or just being a general prick, Heel Cole was completely unbearable. unbearable. That said, in this moment, he was somehow the sympathetic figure. On the June 4th, 2012 episode of Raw, <laughs> Cole was put into a match with none other than John Cena. The future peacemaker utterly humiliated the announcer, stripping him down to his undies and covering him in barbecue sauce. Mm, yep. This was supposed to be cathartic, the annoying bad guy getting his comeuppance, but it just looked like bullying. Here was a professional <laughs> athlete beating the snot out of an untrained civilian who people only really hated because he was given bad material. As irritating as Michael Cole the character was, Michael Cole the man did not deserve this. Or yeah. <laughs> maybe he did. Why am I his parole officer? Number six. Nah. <laughs> When you put it like that, <laughs> untrained announcer, just a regular civilian, getting his ass beat by literally one of the top guys in WWE. <laughs> That's Vince for you right there. <laughs> good lucha things. Anyone oh. remember when Kalisto did that insane Salida del Sol off the top of a ladder, not Facts. ringing any bells? Anyone remember when Kalisto totally fluffed his lines in a backstage promo? Of course you do. <laughs> when WWE re-split itself into two distinct rosters in 2016, the former United States and NXT tag team champion found a new home on the blue brand. The company must have thought that Kalisto would have something good to say about this. The 
they thought wrong. The masked star was approached backstage and asked to give his feelings on the move. Over the next 30 seconds, Kalisto muttered his way through several disconnected sentences, stumbling over his words Aww. before running off in the other direction with a half-hearted woohoo! Now is not <laughs> the time for woohoos, young man. The most iconic part this. of this shambles is when he says that he wants to make good lucha things. Over a century of proud Mexican wrestling history downgraded to good, good lucha, lucha things. things. Fitting <laughs> tributes. Watching Kalisto fall apart. That's fucking stupid. A history, a lineage, a legacy of uh, fantastic luchadors all summed up. Good lucha things. That's what I want to do. What you want to bring to the SmackDown brand? Good lucha things. <laughs> Damn. Part before our very eyes was oh. skin crawling, but oh. I will be damned if it isn't one of the funniest <laughs> lucha things I've ever seen. That's funny. Number five, man. the old day. Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods cemented this. themselves as one of the greatest factions in WWE history during their mammoth 483 day reign as WWE's Raw Tag Team Champs. One moment from that run they won't be in any rush to relive is this disastrous segment from the Ooh. September 6th, 2016 edition of Raw. Yeah, in the build-up to their this. title match with the New Day at Clash of Champions, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson declared that they were going to retire the group as champions. But don't worry, they said, we'll look after you once you step away from the ring. Enter the old day. Three men dressed up as an elderly version of the trio slowly made their way down to the ring on an assortment of mobility scooters, crutches, and walkers. Cue an agonizingly unfunny array of old people jokes playing out to a crowd stunned to silence. Everybody involved deserved way better than this rubbish, which had us all feeling like pensioners by the time it finally came to an end. I'm telling you, man, someone, obviously Vince Green, Green lit a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff you see on t uh, TV, especially back then, it's just, you bring this to me, I'm telling you, get the hell up out of my office, bro. Don't come back in here until you come up with a good idea. Like that, awful. Number four, Ambrose's bum shots. When ah, Roman Reigns announced that he was too. stepping away from wrestling to battle his returning leukemia, it was one of the most heartfelt and genuine moments WWE has ever seen. So how did the company follow this up? Well, by having his former buddy Dean Ambrose turn into a germaphobe. Obviously. <laughs> After this turning so heel stupid. on Seth Rollins on the same night as Roman's announcement, Ambrose's character went from conflicted friend to man who wears gas mask because he thinks the crowd stinks. This the absolute so worst stupid, part of this gimmick, if you even want to call it that, was when he cut a promo on the audience whilst getting vaccinated. In the bum. He was getting vaccinated in the bum. This man had the, the the great value Bane fit going on, bro. Oh my, that was so stupid. They just could have had him being a, a heel, but instead, he, he, I mean. Just imagine going up to the modern day John Moxley and telling him he was doing a segment that involved him pulling his trousers down and taking a needle to the jacksy on live TV. He would legitimately try and kill you and then probably start bleeding everywhere. <laughs> the part of this segment comes not from the absurd premise, but also the fact it was so closely linked to such a tender moment. Yeah. Number three, suffering Succotash. Uh, Before you knew it. You seen the thumbnail, you knew this had to be on there. One of the worst promos Roman Reigns has ever probably I think it probably is the worst promo he's ever given it was awful it wasn't funny you could tell they gave him something to write down like this was gonna be funny you got this just go out there and say it word for word and it was complete doo-doo so glad he's much more comfortable more believable on the microphone now he was the ultra suave super cool tribal chief roman reigns was a bland baby face to many that wwe tried to force down our throats like we were a baby who wouldn't eat our dinner here comes the arrow reigns 
WWE's heavy-handed promotion of Roman was one thing that put people off, but they also didn't help him by giving him some truly awful lines of dialogue. Awful. He once referred to Sheamus' genitals as tater tots, with all the panache and sophistication of an eight-year-old shoving crayons up their nose. But nothing will ever top the time he quoted Sylvester the Cat during a promo so duel with so Seth Rollins. So On the January 9th, 2015 edition of SmackDown, so Reigns said to the man who stabbed him in the back and broke up the shield that he was a sniveling little sellout full of suffering succotash, son. I honestly don't even know what to say, but it definitely wouldn't be that. To that so awful, many bro. fans, this was the point of no return for Reigns. <laughs> Any credibility he had left yep. from his days as a heavy hitter evaporated faster than you could say Looney Tunes, and a piece of every single grown adult watching that day shriveled up and died. Number two, The Miz searches for his lines. Oh my God. Say what what you no. want about the Miz, but we can all agree that he is a pretty damn decent talker. For sure. I mean, you don't get to star in a movie like Christmas Bounty without having a way with words. <laughs> However, it took a long time for the A-lister to get to where he is today, as evidenced by this moment from his early days on WWE TV. In between competing on Tough Enough and wrestling full-time, Miz was the host of the Diva Search. Part of his duties included turning up on Raw to let people know how to vote, which soon turned into one of the worst nights of young Mr. Mizanin's life. After initially stumbling over his words, he then completely pooped the bed and forgot everything he was supposed to say. Yeah. He frantically switched between telling the audience where to call, how to text, how to vote online, never actually finishing any of his sentences. Oh. All the while, the restless crowd booed this poor little <laughs> dyed blonde deer in the headlights. It's truly painful to watch Miz go through this, but he did meet his wife through the diva search, so hmm. don't feel too bad for it. And it's one of those things where it's a learning lesson. It is not easy. And I, I give respect to the wrestlers that have crafted their, their skills and ability to be able to talk on the microphone and entertain the crowd or hold the crowd's attention while you're talking about a match, talking about a person, hyping up a feud, whatever the case is, it's very impressive to do it at a high level. So, of course, you're going to have those moments you come out there and, you know, he's new to the business and he, he just froze, forgot what he was supposed to say, and, you know, crowd eats you alive. But it's part of the learning curve. You got to go through that to build that tough skin to get better and ultimately, you know, you can become one of the best talkers on the microphone, which the Miz is. He's comfortable out there. You can tell he, his stuff is not scripted. He goes out there, do, do what he has to do, say what he has to say, and it works. You know, so I'm not going to knock him for that. You know, I'm sure it was definitely cringe at the time, but it's a part of the business. It's not easy to go out there and to talk on the microphone and entertain people while doing it. Thousands of people, millions watching at home. It's not easy to do that. So kudos to him for getting up his microphone skills up and, you know, end up meeting his wife in the process. <laughs> For him. Number one, Trish barks like a dog. Ah, Some of these moments funny. have been funny. <laughs> All of them have been cringing. Oh man, we just seen that uh, little situation. Becky Lynch bringing that up on uh, on uh, last week's Monday Night Raw. <laughs> but none have been as outright offensive as what went down on the March fifth, two thousand one episode of Raw. Bark like a dog. At the time, Trish Stratus <laughs> was the on-air mistress of Vince McMahon, and I must stress on-air for legal reasons. Yeah. After growing tired of his much younger lover, again in storyline that is, yeah. Vince decided to humiliate poor Trish in front of a paying crowd. He commanded the future women's champion to strip down to her underwear before instructing her to get on all fours and bark like a dog. I want you to know you could not, he could never get away with this now. No. In terms of its mission statement to generate nuclear heat on McMahon, this worked a treat. But it was also horribly uncomfortable to watch and yeah. sent a very disturbing message. Yes, Trish may have gotten her revenge at WrestleMania, but was it really worth all this? Was it really worth a 25-year-old woman being degraded for an audience of millions? The answer is obviously no, and we could have all told you that when we were forced to sit through this horrifying moment. You can yep. see why they left this bit out of a Hall of Fame video package, eh? Of course, of course, of course. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was a great video, going back, seeing some of these cringe moments. Some of them, I, you know, didn't witness myself, the uh, Kalisto one. That's 
That's some that that's funny. I did not know. <laughs> good good lucha wrestling, man. I, I did not know. Bring some good lucha wrestling into the mix. I didn't know he just botched it up like that. But hey man, once again, it's a part of wrestling. You're gonna get some cringe moments, some Royals moments, and unfortunately, sometimes you'll get some I'm changing the channel moments, and you don't want those as much as off uh, as possible so comment down below let me know some other wwe cringe moments or some AEW cringe moments some old wcw cringe moments let me know down below what's the most cringiest thing you've seen on a wrestling show to the point where it just you was like yeah i'm done for today or tonight I'm, I'm gonna watch something else or you was over it let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on channel road to 150k and i and I, I, you know what? I forgot what I was about to say, man. Y'all know what? Y'all know my usual outro. Peace. <laughs>